We welcome you once again to the third edition of Cebuland Masters Home Fest entitled New Home, New Hope. Home Fest is Cebuland Masters' biggest online sales event that showcases economic, mid market, and high end CLI dream homes in safe and secure communities that have generous amenities, property management that ensures 24 7 security, and easy access to essentials. Discounted prices on selected projects, easy all in down payments, flexible payment terms are available during this virtual event that will run from February 15 to March 31. Visit us at wwwhomefest sibulanmasterscom for more information. As you choose your new homes in CLI communities, we also bring you a series of lifestyle talks. Today, our topic is designing new beginnings and our guest speaker is a Cebuana interior designer who has worked for three years in Crescent Heights of America, a premier real estate developer in the United States. She decided to move back to Cebu in 2007 and established HL Designs, an interior design company specializing in the staging of model units and designing common areas for real estate developers. She has bachelor's degree in interior design from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. She also took up her master's in real estate development from Columbia University in New York and a certificate course in interior design in Parsons School of Design in New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, to give us tips and insights on how to maximize our home spaces, let's welcome our speaker this afternoon Interior designer, Ms. Hannah Lim. Good morning, everyone. So I'm here to give you a talk on designing new beginnings, essential interior design considerations before turnover. First of all, know the why. Go back to the reason why you bought your condo. Is it for investment? Were you planning to rent it out? Or were you planning to flip it as soon as the price goes up? Or are you going to live in it? Did you buy it for your kids who are going to school in the area? Knowing your why or going back to why you bought the condo will help you determine the next steps in designing your space. Number two, set a budget. Know how much are you willing to spend to fit out your unit. To give you an idea, I created this pie chart here just to give you um, a percentage of how much should be allotted per particular aspect of fitting out your condo. So this suggested budget is based on a typical one bedroom unit as I was informed that majority of our buyers are studios and one bedroom units. So here I would recommend that 45% be spent on furniture, lighting, and window coverings. The next big ticket item would be the appliances because this does not in, because your standard unit doesn't come with AC, refrigerator, washing machine, range, range hood. So those are big ticket items. So a big chunk of your budget should go to your appliances. Next, um, next chunk I would really recommend is you hire professionals. So it goes to 25% would go to the construction, design, and installation. And the reason why I used uh, um, the suggested budget is based on a typical one bedroom is because in a one bedroom, it already includes closets and glass shower enclosures. So that explains why 4% will be allotted to your bathroom because you don't need to spend any more for a glass shower enclosure, which is usually the setback or the expensive thing for that. Most likely you'll just have to buy a water heater. So basically that's it. And then maybe 5% miscellaneous, like maybe you know, moving fees or um, cleaners, other unforeseen expenses. So basically that's it. And then um, I have a tip. If you're going to rent it out, don't spend too much, but don't scrimp too much either. Well-designed, well-appointed units not only get rented out faster, they can fetch higher rates as well. Number three, make a wish list. Determine what are your non-negotiables. 
Like for example, storage. You want lots of storage. But what for? What storage for what? Is it for your bike? Or maybe shoes, bags, clothes, or books? Knowing what your storage needs are can help you plan and manage your space better. Wish list number two, or wish B, the kitchen. Perhaps you love to cook, so you want to splurge on your kitchen and cooking appliances. We've had clients request for a dishwasher in a turned over condo unit. So if that's really on your wish list, then a lot budget for that that you really want a dishwasher. Or perhaps you want you want professional grade appliances like the Sub-Zero and Wolf um, range. So maybe that's something you want to splurge on. Next. Um, some clients have actually asked us to cut the deliverable kitchen because they really want something tailored to their aesthetic. And that would mean brand new kitchen cabinets, a different countertop, just to be really unique. So basically that's it. Um, I'm sharing pictures of some condo projects we've done where the clients have requested us to cut the kitchen and do something really new. So on the left, you'll actually see that there is a dishwasher, like I said. So the dishwasher has a cabinet face, which is one of the features of a Smeg dishwasher. And then the cabinets are also new. That's not the deliverable of this condo unit. And even the tiles, you see that there's matruca on the floor. That's something new. In the middle picture, we've added mirror backsplash and a different set of backsplash for the uh, behind the range and stove. And then on the right picture, right photo, you'll see subway tiles, which is something also that you can add because a typical condo unit doesn't really have tile backsplash behind it. So basically that's it. Wish number three, if you bought your condo for your kids going to school, then you want to create a place conducive for studying. On these project photos, these are actually actual condo units that were commissioned to us because the parents bought them for their kids. So requirements for that would really be proper study tables. I didn't have a good picture here, but I have even had a client whose child was studying for architecture. So a drafting table was something that we really had to plan for. And since like, let's say two kids going to school together, the middle picture are two twin beds, but you'll notice that there are wall lamps so that they can read in bed. Just a tip here, as soon as you know your why, budget and wishes, stop browsing on design apps as they can confuse you even more with all the beautiful design ideas and pictures being flashed in your eyes. This is very true because I've had clients in the past where we we're done doing the design and they were okay with it. And actually like it's approved already for execution, but during their free time, maybe just before going to bed, they would be browsing these apps. And so the next thing you know, even with all the drawings done, the, con the quotations being run already, they call and they say, Hannah, I changed my mind. I like this, I like that. And that's why I think at some point you gotta stop looking at these design apps. So I have another tip for you. Tip number four, hire professionals to do the job. By professionals, I mean your dream team would be composed of a good contractor, a professional or preferably even a licensed interior designer, a project manager and legit suppliers. Um, I can only speak for myself or for the for my profession, as I am an interior designer, on the advantages of hiring one. Number one, they can help you spot things during turnover and punch list. This is something that I've been invited to several times already to join a client for the turnover of their unit. And the purpose for us being invited to do this is because we're going to be their additional pair of eyes to see if there are any defects in the unit or perhaps there are things that should be touched up, things that they don't see, but a trained professional eye can spot right then. Next is the Secret Society of Sources. This is a funny story. I just had a recent American client who hired me and said, I need your services because it seems to me that there is this secret society of sources that only you designers know where. I found it funny at that time, but then I thought about it 
You're right. That is one of the beauty of having interior an interior designer. We go beyond what you just see in Mandawe Foam, Our Home, or SM. We know a whole list of other suppliers to buy your furniture, your fabric, your tiles. So that's another plus. Next, interior designers can make your vision come to life. So after you've browse through all those design apps and you more or less know what design direction you want to take. It is the job of interior designers to make your vision come to life by putting them into drawings. And especially since it's a condo where we need to, or you will need to pass drawings before you can even start your construction, having an interior designer on board will be the one to draw these drawings, submit them to the property management office, for approval, and then execute the work. An interior designer can actually save you money because there is a tendency, what if like you like going shopping? Oh, I like this couch, I'll buy it. And then when you go back to your unit, have it delivered, oh my goodness, it doesn't even fit. Or it's like your living room is just all couch. Having an interior de designer on board can plan your space prior to buying things so they can advise you whether they fit whether um, it can accommodate all other items or not. So in effect, that saves you money. Instead of just going out there buying things and they cannot fit and you can't return them anymore. So that being said, interior designers can maximize space and make your flow more efficient. So with the advent of condo living where spaces are now very limited, an interior designer is able to plan your space so that there's extra storage or it can accommodate whatever else you had in mind. Hiring a professional interior designer without a legit contractor is like going into surgery without nurses, anesthesiologists, and other key players for a successful surgery. So it's not enough to just have an interior designer on board. I would really recommend to go for the entire dream team, like especially the good contractor, because I've had some clients who engaged our services, but did not hire a legit contractor saying, oh, we can just do it ourselves. You can just get a carpenter to do the job. But at the end of the day, a good design is only as good as the contractor. So without a good contractor and you think you could just do it yourself, it can end up in a disaster. <laughs> okay, lastly, um, five, some essentials to splurge on. This is my personal list and it's not so much. Number one, I would recommend to splurge on a mattress. You have to remember that you spend one third of your time sleeping in bed. So it's a good investment to splurge on a good mattress. And with that, it comes with good linen and pillows. Here's a tip, the higher the thread count, the better the quality of the fabric. Second, I would recommend um, to splurge on energy efficient appliances. When I say energy efficient appliances, you notice here it says inverter. The inverter technology means it consumes less electricity. So there are now, so some of those common appliances that eat up a lot of Electricity is, of course, the refrigerator because you keep this on the whole day. So I would recommend getting a inverter refrigerator. And then since we live in a very hot and humid country, we are very dependent on the AC. So I would recommend also getting an inverter type air condition. Alternatively, though, on the right side, this is one of the condos we recently turned over. You'll see that it has a very beautiful ceiling fan above. This is called the Aerotron ceiling fan. It costs just as much as an AC, and that's why it's a splurge, but it only consumes about five kilowatts of electricity, and the airflow is very good, so it minimizes the use of the AC, so you still get savings. And lastly, I would recommend spending on window coverings. And some considerations when you pick out your window coverings is maintenance. Like personally, for common areas, I would just do blinds because that way all you need to do is vacuuming. No need to laundry, take off and laundry. No need to like reinstall. You can just wipe it off, the, wipe off the dust and just vacuum. It's very easy. But for the bedrooms, I go for blackout curtains for those days when you want to sleep in. 
and you have to consider ease of operation. Uh, it's not enough to just go out to the store and buy a blackout curtain and think it's all good already. Because if you don't consider the ease of operation, when you draw your blinds or your curtains, it snags. So it's a bit of a hassle. So those are things that I would really consider. Ease of operation, maintenance, and blackout. So that ends my talk on designing new beginnings. I hope you learned something for me today. Thank you for listening and good luck with your turnover. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us, Ms. Hannah. Your ideas are very helpful as we conceptualize and design the spaces of our homes. Ladies and gentlemen, for questions, kindly send us a message through Clio, which is CLI's chatbot, and we will respond to you within the day. Thank you for watching the second session of Home Fest 2022 Lifestyle Talks. See you next week. from the start